Okay, it's uh, 42 days of Keto Chow. Today is day 20. I'm leaving for San Francisco in just a couple of hours. Um, that should be fun. Uh, my plan is to do uh, time-restricted feeding, also known as intermittent fasting. Um, I'm just, I just ate breakfast, I'm going to eat lunch, and then dinner I'm going to um, have just before I leave to go to the airport, or maybe on my way to the airport. I don't really have to worry about my uh, um, blender bottle getting nasty gross in my car because hey, it's below freezing. So anyway, um, that way I don't have to worry about taking stuff with me and getting it through um, security and all that other jazz. Which is funny because my checked bags will have a whole bunch of heavy cream and hydro flasks in it. So I'll have more than enough keto chow. It just won't be, it won't be the, the 2,000 calorie a day stuff that I normally mix up. So for this test, that'll be interesting. Um, let's see. Oh, I got my uh, test results back for the, the week of doing um, grapeseed oil. Um, so I, as I anticipated, it didn't bring down my LDL cholesterol brought down the particle and the count um, from, it went from 1242 down to 849 for the uh, particle number, which is within normal range. Ooh, I'm normal. Um, it also brought down my LDL-C, which is the total LDL, uh, from 116 to 72. Again, now I'm in the normal range. Um, now my triglycerides, this was the whole reason I did this test. Um, back in November when I did the test with uh, avocado oil, my triglycerides went from 10, no, 113 up to 199. And I wanted to see if that was a cause of the polyunsaturated or what. Now, I still do have the monounsaturated test coming up, but I don't think that will cause an increase in triglycerides. We'll see, though. But anyway, so with this test... Um, doing the grapeseed oil for a week, my triglycerides, they went up from 104 to 117, which is still, that's actually in the normal range still. It's not really a big deal, but it's just funny to me that it didn't really go up. Now, um, I have the uh, spreadsheet of my test results um, linked to the blog post that goes along with this video, so you can go with that, go to there. Um, there's a couple of different tabs. You've got the Chris tab, which is all of my blood results for all the tests I've been doing lately. Um, then they, you've got a female one and a female two tab as well. Um, those are, well, uh, I, I've already told you before. One of them is my wife. One of them is one of our friends. They're doing uh, uh, four weeks of keto chow only two weeks of heavy cream, then a week of avocado oil only, and then a week of avocado and heavy cream mixed. Now, interestingly enough, um, both of them, their, their triglycerides have just kind of stayed steady the entire time. So I, I, it makes me wonder if my, the spike in my triglycerides, that one test, was just a freak aberration or what. Um, Dave Feldman recently published a video where him and Siobhan talk about the need for fasting before doing a um, lipid panel test, and it's specifically because of the triglycerides. If you eat just before doing one of these tests, your, your triglycerides will s just go out of control, uh, just wildly high. And I think that's because of the chylomicrons, if I remember correctly, what, what Dave um, was explaining. But now I was fasting before that test, so I don't think it was that. I don't know. It could have been any number of things. Um, now, interestingly enough, also on that blood test, it showed that my um, the PUFAs call, caused my cortisol to go up pretty dramatically. It went from a 9.8 to a 12.7. Um, that's actually the highest I've gotten so far with my um, cortisol. Now, Cortisol is very dependent on what you've been doing that day. Um, for instance, one of the uh, females who are doing the blood test, or all the testing, uh, she exercises in the morning not long before she goes to do her test. So her cortisol levels are significantly higher than anybody else's. Um, Dave Feldman showed in some of his tests that he could 
I think he went up to like a 20 or something like that in his cortisol by, uh, I can't remember if he was training for a half marathon or what it was, but his cortisol was, can, could go up or down just depending on what he did. Now what you're looking for is um, chronically high cortisol. That's a bad thing. Also, um, the cardioreactive protein, CRP, which is a measure of how inflamed your heart is. It's another inflammation market marker. Um, mine actually didn't go up at all. It was, uh, I mean, it was just slightly up with this test, but not really high at all. In fact, it was lower than it was when I started my tests back in November. So, although poo the PUFAs did cause some inflammation, um, specifically, I felt it quite markedly in my uh, plantar fascia, with my plantar fasciitis flaring up. Um, overall, it seems like it was fine as far as my blood tests went. And now it did, once again, the American Diabetes Association and the America Heart Association say that you should be eating a lot of polyunsaturated fatty acids because they lower LDL cholesterol, which they did. No surprise, um, but that's not an end unto itself like they seem to believe. Um, all my other biomarkers just kind of tracked normal, although my triglycerides did go up and my uh, cortisol went up. It doesn't look like I was any healthier. Uh, I would argue I was a little bit less healthy by doing that. So anyway, um, that's... That's today's update. I'll, I'll catch you guys when I get back from uh, San Francisco.